this is the last segment of the meetup about personalization is the new AB testing. And here we have time to now get into the questions that you have been asking through Slido and the comments and that I hear from the everyday work with you guys in the coachings and in the workshops. What is the best tutorial to learn AB testing? All right, that is a good one. So um, I would highly recommend going to the uh, content marketing sections of the big providers um, who are providing A-B testing software. So I know three good resources. Um, there is the Google Academy, which helps you to understand Google Analytics and Google Optimize quite thoroughly. It's completely for free. All of those tutorials are usually for free because it helps, helps people to onboard people. Then there is a good one uh, on the content section on AB Tasty, the sponsor of today's um, meetup. And there is another good one on HubSpot. I know HubSpot has landing, a landing page tool with AB testing in it, and they are really good at content marketing, so they will explain it to you. So those three ones are the first places I would look at um, for learning tutorials with AB testing. Otherwise, if you are also into less structured um, content, just search, um, just search YouTube. I learn most of the stuff um, that no, that is not documented anywhere else through blogs and YouTube. Yeah, so just Google it, um, and you will find a lot of solutions. But those content sections of those providers I mentioned, they are usually much more structured, and what I really like about that. So if you have any other suggestions about resources to learn A-B testing, please leave them in the comments, in the Discord, and so everybody can check it out. If you have done a tutorial about it, feel free to plug your own tutorial. All right, so the next question is, how does A-B testing affect um, SEO? Yes, there are some impacts. So A-B testing has, uh, for example, um, the disadvantage that the page speed is decreased a little bit, which can be a negative effect for SEO. This is why we usually not do a global A-B test, but we set A-B test for a specific set of audiences, maybe a certain percentage of your visitors, and we do those on specific landing pages. Um, but if you have a global A-B test, site speed can be something that is affecting that. Uh, I think that a lot of A-B testing suit also, suits also ignore robots. So robots will see usually the default version and not the uh, personalized version. But this can be different from tool to tool. Yeah, so Google that question in the context of the tool you have chosen. May it be A-B Tasty, may it be Google Optimize, may it be Optimizely, whatever you have chosen yeah, for yourself. Alrighty. Um, ah, I love the next one already. If people got block cookies, uh, this will not work, right? That is correct. If people block cookies, everybody sees the default version. I would even go one step further. Further. Oh, right. By the way, this is a question by Ron. Ron is the most prolific question asker so far in the Pirate Skills community. Thank you very much. So, yes, you definitely ha are going to ask, have to ask for consent in the future, anyways. So, uh, with all of the GDPR and e-privacy stuff that is going on, the move towards asking for to con for consent prior to doing any kind of marketing juju. Um, is going to be a requirement. So yes, of course, first of all, if people block cookies, this is not going to work, except if you build a custom solution that is not based on cookies. Yeah. Second thing, the personalization of the A-B test will not take effect until people have consented. Uh, and I'm very curious about answers from the community. First of all, do you think that A-B testing is required um, to be like in the marketing section or is it just a statistics thing? Yeah, I, th I think it is supposed to be in the marketing sections, but I think we get would get a higher opt-in rate if it would be just in the statistics. 
or could we even argue for any kind of essential plugins? Yeah, uh, but I, I'm not confident on that at all. So if you have more insights into the legal side of cookie consent and A-B testing, aka personalization, please let us know in the comments. I even take resources and articles about it. I, I recently had that very issue uh, with um, a client of mine where the question was, do we have to wait for consent before we can do the A-B test? But don't the people then see the old version first and then the new version? Doesn't that look super stupid? Yes, it does look super stupid. And you have to make your entrepreneurial decision if you want to load that before consent or after. But there was another, in Germany at least, there was another ruling last week, which again sub sub support, sub supports the... Um, the the hold on that we have to ask for consent before any marketing juju whatsoever yeah so it is affected <clears throat> okay next question does google optimize or the other platforms show me the new code so that i can implement it on my website on my own uh, once the test is over no it does not uh, of course, you can just look into the source code and you can copy paste it there, but you usually don't want to do this. The, the quality of what you see is what you get editor changes is not the best. Please check that out um, depending on the platform that you're using. But I would not, <laughs> in my opinion, I would not copy paste code that has been done by, by Google Optimize, for example, into the live production version. I would want to have very nice and clean code there. All right, next question. Um, do I need um, do I need kind of two websites for a B testing or is it just a simple change? What does the testing do with my Google rank? So I guess I, I understand the first part of the question, like do you need two websites to do an A B test? No, we don't. You can do uh, with most tools, you can do an A, B, C, D, E test on, a, on one single website, one URL. For me, I do a lot of testing on the piratesguilds.com slash workshops, and it's just this one URL, and I do a couple of tests on this page, and I do a couple of personalization on the same one. So you don't need multiple ones, but you're absolutely free to do that. If you think it's easier for you to, for example, test two very different layouts on two different landing pages, then you're free to do that. And you can use the, the redirect functionality that is available in most tools to see is version A or B better, the website A or B. So that's possible. And does it affect your rankings, your Google rank? I answered that in the first question. It does a little, but not much. All right, let me translate this German question. Um, where can I get inspiration for new tests? Oh, this is a good one. Um, I do tend to look at good competitor websites to see what are they doing differently than what I'm doing. I go to growthhackers.com, um, which is a community where people share articles and case studies and growth studies about all kinds of changes people have done on, on websites. Um, a lot of A-B testing tools have libraries of A-B tests. There is also a quick game where you can guess um, which version ha has been better and you see if you're right or wrong which is quite fun. If you Google like for A-B testing game, you will find it. And this is generally where I get ideas. Um, also the search result for um, what are good ways to, uh, to improve my landing page uh, is, is, a, is a good resource to, to find more and more articles about that. Um, in general, in my own opinion, I try to really look at my website or app with a very new user set of eyes. I, I, I start from the very beginning. I, I look at the top left um, part of my website and I think like, 
do those elements really need to exist? If a new user or returning re user would see this, is every menu item relevant? Is the image that I use in the background of a main header really contributing or is it just slowing down my website? Is the value proposition on my website clear and don't I have better ways, better ways of storytelling for specific audiences to, to communicate my value proposition on that specific landing page? And, and this is what actually gets me into real quality ideas. Whenever I think about storytelling and specific audience segments, how could I make this website in a way that certain people will really love it and other people will really hate it because then I know I'm not boring and bland. And now with personalization, I hopefully am able that the people who love that version see that version and the people who don't love that version, they don't see it anymore. They see something else that they love. Yeah, hope that gives you some nice ideas here. All righty, the next question. The next question is, uh, what are the best tools for A-B testing and personalization? Um, we had a nice overview of A-B testing tools in the last video, if you missed that. And um, yes, our sponsor of today is definitely uh, definitely a good recommendation, A-B Tasty. Yeah, then we showed you a lot of example from, from Google Optimize. Then there is VWO, there's Optimizely, there is Adobe Target. There are a lot of platforms for you to do this. Um, if you're in a beginner and in a very low budget, take a look at Google Optimize because it already works with your probably installed Google Analytics. If you are more, if you need more support and somebody who helps you to, to get a really good onboarding into a tools, look at the more premium versions because they are really committed to help you get started and to get results. Hope that answers that question. All right. How many questions do we have? Fantastic, guys. Thank you for all those questions. Um, another good question is, how do you personalize based on gender? Let's simplify the gender discussions to three genders, male, female, unknown. Yeah. Um, at any given point, your analytics suit has an opinion on your website's gender. It's either male, female, or unknown. Facebook, based on the self-reported gender, has a pretty good, a large segment of the people that, that, that the Facebook pixel is looking at, it knows the correct gender. Google Analytics maybe knows it from a smaller part of that audience, but you might have um, a whole database in the background. Let's say you have a big e-commerce store, you know the people who primarily buy female clothes, identify more with the female gender, the people with the male clothes identify with the male gender. But some people you don't know it because they buy mixed stuff or they haven't bought anything before. And you can use those data sources to tell, um, to tell Google Optimize or another tool that you're using what gender is the probable one of the visitor that is looking at your page right now. And there are several ways to, to get that into your tool. So with Google, with Google Optimize, it's the data layer, or, or in, in general case is um, for all tools, if you put it, for example, in a Facebook campaign, you are very likely to know that you just target women, yeah? Uh, if you press the please only target women between 25 and 44, you're pretty sure that this is correct. Um, and you can add a parameter um, where you please don't write women 25 to 44 because that would already go into the personal identifiable information area and we want to avoid this. You just code this like F25, yeah? Um, and now your website sees that parameter, like you could call it G equals F25. Um, and now your, your A-B testing software, no matter which you do, can pick up this parameter and know, ah, they're coming from an ad that was targeted towards women. 
and to men and to unknown, of course. Yeah, this is how you can easily differentiate between genders. All right, we got another one. Um, which framework um, for the website is the best for testing? Good one. Um, so in frameworks, I'm, I'm going to deliberately not understand this as which tool, because we already answered that. With framework, I'm, I'm taking this question in term of technical platform. What is the website built with? I can tell you that I have much less problems with server-side rendered websites like PHP websites, for example, a WordPress website, a Wix, a Squarespace. They are generally pretty easy in working with A-B testing and personalization. Where it gets more difficult are single page applications that are, for example, based on Angular or React. It is still absolutely doable, but you have to have much higher technical knowledge in order to pull it off because it's not always clear on which page the user is because they're all always on the same URL, except if the developers implemented a router. So the classic static server-side rendered web pages like the WordPress pages of this world, they make it very easy for you to A-B test. Cool. The next question is, can you implement the personalization in a website that is built in CMS, yeah, in a customer management software? Let me interpret that question as, how can I access my CMS data? No, it's a content management system, not the CRM. Okay, let me rephrase my question. Can you implement the personalization in a website that is built in a CMS? Absolutely. Most content management software like WordPress, Wix are easily adaptable to personalizations. Where you want to be careful is when this software, for example, Hub, HubSpot already supports A-B testing. And you want to be sure that there is not an A-B test running on HubSpot and on your, the tool of your choice at the same time. It could be confusing for the software. So the quick answer is yes. All right, the next question is, um, do you also include your CRM info, the active campaign tag for personalization, or rather stay in one system, like Optimize or AB Tasty from Marcel? Let me process this. Um, or rather stay in the system. So if I have access to the CRM information on my website, I am absolutely keen on using that data on my A-B tests um, or, on, uh, or on my personalizations. Let's say I, I use Active Campaign, yeah, for example, and I have the information for the people who bought a ticket, which meetups they went to. And I also have the information whether or not they downloaded the slides for the meetup. So a sneaky thing I could do was, would be to show anybody who's returning to the website who went to a meetup but didn't download the slides, a nice pop-up to, you forgot to download the slides for this meetup, do you want to get it now? Yeah. So um, that would be helpful to the user and it would probably increase the engagement and the perceived value of that user. So. Um, I tried to get as much information as possible. But the question is, how is that information transferred from the CRM to the website so that it's available to you? And there are a couple of ways to do it. The easiest time to transfer data if you send out email campaigns. If you have an active campaign, your MailChimp, you have all the user data and you can add parameters to the links that a user is sending. And you can, for example, you could theoretically um, add a name, add, um, add a gender, add a title, a tag, a website they visited, a lead score, something like that, um, to the link that they clicked. And now on your website, you have this information available in the query parameters. You just have to be sure that you stay in the bounds of what is allowed um, with personal data processing. 
Yeah, and then, then you should be good. Hope that answers your question. Mm, all righty, next one, A B testing on a GDPR. As far as I know, the user needs to consent. In some cases, this might be too late, e.g. a new user arriving on a landing page test and landing page has already loaded. So we talked about that a little bit already before, but I think this is a very critical moment in time where we need to find out on what the actual best practice is. I still remember when I did the GDPR meetup in June last year, it was a complete disaster. There were like nine people showing up here at Startplatz when usually we have 50. And um, there was the first time I actually talked about a concept called consent optimization. <laughs> yeah, you can imagine what it means. We're not only doing conversion rate optimization on your website, we now have to think about how can we optimize the process that we get a large number of people, let's say 80, 90% of people to opt in to accept our marketing cookies, yeah, but still give them the free choice um, to also deny that, but to make it likely that they will convert. So this is what I call consent optimization. Of course, as always within the bounds of what is allowed with GDPR, but not all decisions have already been made there. So what would I say is the best practice in this case? At the moment, I would say do two things. First of all, wait for the consent um, of your user before you load Google Optimize, for example. And um, if we have new and different information about that in the comments, please let me know. But I would wait with the consent for your A-B testing software, because if people deny, they just see the default version and nothing flickers, all is good. If they say yes, yeah, you have the problem that they have already seen the old version and they now see the new version and this sucks. So what could you do? In my case, I prefer to do, um, uh, middle of the screen consent box that also blacks out a little bit the viewport of the user. Yeah. Um, so that people have a very centralized focus on making that consent decision. Now, if they say yes, I give it a short wait before I let it animate out and the AB test is usually loaded in the background properly. Yeah, before the user sees the original version. So you essentially have to hide your website behind the consent. One caveat, I'm not 100% sure how long it's going to be allowed that we have those centralized, everything blocked out cookie consent boxes. Yeah, so please stay in touch with the legal decision making on that part. But that is my current best practice on how I do it. I wait for consent, but I use a cookie that is central with a black darkening screen around it. You can check this out on the workshop page from Pirate Skills. Please, team, um, put the link to the workshop landing page uh, in the comments and on Discord so people can check this out. I use WordPress and the Borlabs cookie plop plugin to realize this. So. Check it out. It's completely set up with Google Optimize there. Did you get that, Christina? We need the link from the from the WordPress landing page, please, in the comments and in the Discord. Thank you. All right, three more questions. Um, what is your favorite tool from AB Tasty and Google Optimize? By far, it is the ability, which is possible on both tools, um, to personalize based on the campaign. Yeah, that I know that people are coming from specific email and ad campaigns. This improves my conversion rates on my most important landing pages where I spent the most money by far. Yeah, so that's, that's my favorite. Brrrt. Okay, second to last questions. Statistical relevance and correlation setup tests under GDPR. For example, 
Landing page test, but users opt out after three pages. Still counted in test sessions, but has not seen uh, the actual test. I would say this is a very edgy case because people usually do not opt out after three pages. I would I would say that 99% of people made the decision on the, on page one, which is where you are supposed to show the GDPR consent. So it should be flushed under the lots of other visitors, even if you have that case. Yeah, if it's not, if it's actually happening. Yeah, it should be not relevant in terms of statistical significance here. All right, that is it for today. I thank you all for joining and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.